The holiday season is upon us, and with that comes bowl season. All sorts of games, so many teams playing, everyone playing for a different trophy, a different title. It's the greatest time of the year. Championship season in college football is upon us. Night, Clinton. Oh man, I'm excited for this one tonight. How about you? I, I'm I'm overly excited to get this one out there. I, I I love bowl season. This is one of the best times of the year. This is like March Madness to me. This this is great. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is the first time we've ever done this, but uh, I'm looking forward to breaking down over the next uh, week. We're gonna be multiple part series here. We're gonna break down every game in this year's bowl season and uh, who we think is going to win the confidence behind it. And then uh, we'll see how well we do. Yeah. And there's a lot of games. So there's, there's a lot, a lot of points to get across in these couple of videos. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say with that, why don't we uh, jump right in and look at the first set of games that we have pulled up for tonight. Um, I know I decided that I was going to start it off with one of my like least confident games in the entire uh <laughs> play uh in the tournament and that is going to be the frisco classic between north texas and miami of ohio i said north texas wins this game i i don't know much about these two teams i can't i'm going to be pretty honest that uh this one's a pretty uh i just don't watch uh miami ohio or north texas too often um i saw a north oh. texas game when i was there a couple of years ago in texas but uh other than that i do not have any knowledge of that game but then uh <laughs> Jumping from there, we'll go straight into the L.A. Bowl, which is going to be the Utah State going up against Oregon State. This is Oregon State's first bowl game since 2013. They've never lost to Utah State, which is a pretty interesting uh, tidbit on them. But Utah State did just come off winning the um, Mountain West Conference Championship. They just blew out uh, San Diego State in that game. However, I don't see that going on. I think the Pac-12 strength is just a little too much, and Oregon State is going to keep that streak alive. I put them in. Once again, a little confidence in that one there, but I do think Oregon State pulls off the win in the L.A. Bowl. And then okay. finally, okay. the how about the Bahama Bowl? I, I, I think that's a good one to get us started off with. Another game of two kind of middle and teams, the 6-6 six and six middle MTSU, Middle Tennessee State, against Toledo. Um This is the first bowl game for Toledo since 2018, and it's been over six years since they've won one. But a little fun bit on them this year was that they almost upset Notre Dame this year. They just barely got beat at the end, and Notre Dame is now a playoff, right outside the playoffs um, team this year. So that's a – that, to me, is a pretty significant win and enough that uh, I'm going to say Toledo's going to win this game over Middle Tennessee Tennessee State – and uh, I have a reasonable confidence on that one. I'm putting that one at number 22. All right. All right. Um, the North Texas game, I, I – Frisco Classic, I'm, I'm going with North Texas in that one. Um, I – to me, I saw their, their running back had a pretty good season. Um, DeAndre Torrey, he had, he had over 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. I put – that one at my 24th confidence so not not overly confident on that one but i am going with north texas um the la bowl i i went with utah state um i think utah state they had they have a a receiver devin Tompkins, who had almost 1600 yards this year and that that's that's a pretty good season for for a receiver in college football especially how, how little amount of games they play compared to like the NFL. Um, and I was pretty confident in this one. I put this one at my ninth highest confidence in a uh, game. That's a pretty high confidence right there. It is. It is. I, I just don't think Oregon state is going to really, uh, I, I, I don't think Oregon state has the team that can stop Utah state's passing game basically is what it comes down to. Uh, they've been good. They've had a good season, and I just I think they're going to pull that one out. Now, the Middle Tennessee game, the, the Bahama Bowl, I went with Middle Tennessee. Um, they have 
a defensive back who is actually it depends on where you read, but it's, he's he's one of the top interceptions guys in the in the nation. Um, some reports are saying he's tied for first. I've seen some other reports, but he's got five interceptions on the season. That's a pretty good year for college football. You don't see guys getting to like double digits very often. That's not really a thing in college football. To have five of them is pretty good. And he's a Russian freshman, uh, Quincy Riley. And this one, I wasn't real confident in it. I put it at my 38th overall out of 44, but I went with Middle Tennessee State. Very nice, man. That's a, I mean, definitely some parity already between our two uh, brackets. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna be definitely be a big uh, point swing right off the bat. I mean, right, especially when you consider teams that uh, you're placing in the top ten of your confidence. I had that same game down at forty two, so that's a, a big separation <laughs> between the the two there. But um, that's a, I, I, it'll be interesting to see. We'll see how uh, how that one turns out and uh, see what, who gets a good a good start off because those are some of the earlier bowl games in the season. Yeah. And uh, with that said, uh, I said we jump right into – how about the Holiday Bowl next? I think this is a really good matchup. It's UCLA versus North Carolina State. Um, UCLA led up by Chip Kelly. Uh, first bowl game since Chip Kelly came to UCLA. He's kind of brought that team back into the fold a lot. Um, right. And they uh, they did blow out USC at one of the last games of the yeah. season. So that's a, a pretty big one for them. Um these two teams have not played each other in over 50 years. It's been a very mm. long time since they've played each other. North Carolina State's actually a ranked team, but even with that said, I'm uh, I'm giving my confidence over to UCLA. I think uh, UCLA could uh, throw the upset, and I'm pretty confident about that. I'm putting that all the way up at number 19 on my board. Dang. This one. All right, all right. Um, I'm, I'm going the other way on this one. I, I think NC State's going to pull this one out. I put it at my 23rd in confidence. Um, I think their, their quarterback, he, he's a sophomore, uh, Devin Leary, 65.7% completion rating, over 3,400 yards and 35 touchdowns and only five interceptions. So he's been pretty efficient all year. Um, I'm going with NC State. I think, I think they're going to pull this one out. Right. And then after that, the Hawaii Bowl, I put it at 16 confidence. I think Memphis is going to pull that one out. Um, Memphis has a pretty pretty decent team this year. Um, jumping right into the Boca Raton Bowl, um, I went with Appalachian State. In their last eight games this year, they went six and two. Um, Western Kentucky did go eight and, or seven and one in their last eight, but I'm taking Appalachian State in this one, and I'm putting this one pretty high at 17th confidence. So I think Appalachian State's going to pull that one out. All right, all right. Well, I'm going to follow that one up with. Uh, I actually agree with you on both those last two games. I definitely have Memphis in the Hawaii Bowl. I have Appalachian State in the Boca Raton Bowl. Um, Appalachian State has never lost a bowl game before. They are right. six and zero oh throughout their team's history, uh, so that's I think that's a very interesting, um, just like tidbit on there. Although one thing to note is Western Kentucky actually has the top passer in the entire college football, uh, Bailey Zap Zappi. He has over a thousand yards more than anyone else in college football at 5,500 yards. So, That's and 56 crazy. touchdowns. Now, granted, it's Western Kentucky, pretty easy right. conference, not exactly the highest level of competition, but nonetheless, that is a pretty impressive stat to have um, on your <laughs> resume and something he will always get to be known for as, I mean, he'll always be the top passer in college football for one season yeah. so that's a pretty impressive little tidbit to go away with and uh jumping from there go straight into let's go to the alamo bowl oklahoma versus oregon uh as you see in a lot of games like usually there is a team that's kind of the home team uh right oklahoma isn't a home team obviously they're not from san antonio but they're definitely much closer than oregon is to san antonio <laughs> they've played this game a couple times Oklahoma just lost their head coach. He uh, t uh, took the job out there. And um, so uh, that's that's a little bit of a tough one for them, them losing their head coach to USC. But Bob Stoops is going to be coming in and being an interim coach for just one game. So I think that could be an interesting 
uh, an interesting one to have in there. Um, Oklahoma is coming off that big loss to Oklahoma State that cost them a chance at winning their conference championship and maybe even making a run at the bowl, while yeah. um, Oregon State lost in the Pac-12 championship. So they kind of both are in like the in the bad spot of the season coming to an end in ways that they might not have liked necessarily. But that said, I'm putting my confidence in Oklahoma, and I think they're going to probably – beat up on Oregon a little bit here on um, Oregon at the back end of the season just did not look overly strong. Right. And um, I think that's a, I think that's going to, it's going to go to Oklahoma there. And next up, let's uh, let's finish this set off with the independence bowl where we have BYU versus um, UAB. I think um, BYU is a really strong uh, uh, leader in this one here. So strong that I am, <laughs> Literally putting them as my number one overall uh, promise of BYU is ranked number 12 in the nation against the UAB team. And they actually, the only reason why this game turned out the way it did is because BYU is an independent team and actually has a contract to be in the independence bowl, regardless, as long as they qualified and they did obviously qualify. So uh, that's a, I, I, I'm not a big fan of how this matched up very well. I just don't think it's a very <laughs> good matchup, but that's what it is. So Number one confidence, I think BYU stomps out UAB pretty strongly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the with the the Alamo Bowl, I'm going Oklahoma as well. Um, I think Oregon, I agree with you. I think Oregon kind of kind of fell off towards the end of the year. Um, I think Oklahoma, it does hurt them losing Lincoln Riley, but I think they're a good enough team that they'll overcome that. Um, Bob Stoops is not a bad coach. She's been with that program, so I don't think that's gonna be too much to overcome. Um, I think for this game, the biggest thing to me is watching, if he plays, Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, he's a top 10 NFL prospect, um, potential potential number one overall draft pick. Um, I, I'm going Oklahoma, and, I, and I'm fairly confident, and I'm putting it at 12. Um, with the BYU game, the, the Independence Bowl, I'm definitely going BYU. I agree with you. I'm also putting it in my number one confidence because I just – I kind of see this game being a blowout. I don't think it's going to be a real competitive game. Um, UAB won their last game versus Jacksonville State, 31-0. to zero. BYU ended on a five-game winning streak. I just – I – BYU – I think is is in a different level of college football than UAB is, and I don't see it being competitive. Um, from there, jumping into the the UTSA game, the the Frisco Bowl, I'm taking UTSA. I think they had a really good season. Um, Sincere McCormick, their running back, he's a junior, 298 carries, 1,479 yards, and 15 touchdowns. He had a, a really, really good season. Um, came off a pretty good season the year before. Um, and this one I'm putting at number four for confidence because I'm, I'm pretty confident in this game. Um, jumping from there, let's jump to the quick lane bowl. Um, this one I'm not as confident in. I'm putting this 22, but I'm going to take Nevada in this one. Um, I think Carson Strong is a really good quarterback. I, I don't know how he will pan out in the NFL, but – he did have almost 4,200 yards this season, 70% completion rating or uh, completion percentage, um, 36 touchdowns to eight interceptions. Also, they have a really good receiver, Romeo Dubes. He had 80 receptions, over 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Um, I'm going to take Nevada in that one, 22 for confidence because I'm not, I'm not overly confident, but I'm fairly confident. So kind of, you know, middle of the pack on the overall – look of things um from there go into the the myrtle beach bowl this is only the second ever myrtle beach bowl game and these two teams have never played each other so this could be an interesting game um i'm i'm going with pulsa in this one and i'm putting it at my 20th confidence more so just because i don't know a whole lot about tulsa and old dominion but I think Tulsa, I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Tulsa on that one. I, I don't really know what else to say. And I, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about either of these teams this year. 
So going with Tulsa now. Good deal. Good deal. I hear the left side of your board is quickly filling out there. Like uh, you got, <laughs> right? you got a lot of confidence in these early kind of games that are getting played out there. So uh, yeah. I find that to be interesting. My, uh, I think my board is a little more balanced here at the beginning, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm actually following you up almost uh, very close to the same way here. I'm going to say university of Texas, San Antonio is going to knock off San Diego state. Um, UTSA has just been a super up and fast up and coming school. Uh, ranked this year at the end of the season conference USA champions they only started playing like four years ago and they're already in bowl games and doing really yeah. well uh, follow that up Nevada over west of Michigan just like you said um, I do think Carson Strong is going to come out and show up west of Michigan is actually the 17th best pass defense in the country but I don't think they're going to slow down a Nevada team that's really strong and then finally I put Old Dominion over top of Tulsa um Kind of like you, not a whole yeah. lot to work on on this one. Old Dominion didn't actually play last season. They had to come back this year because they took the season off due to COVID. But they're back. First ever meeting, so we don't really know what to expect going into it. So right. uh, um, lower end confidence on this one here. I liked the Old Dominion team looking at it, looking at the overall statistics. I thought they looked a little bit stronger than what Tulsa does. So uh, I'm going to give my nod to Old Dominion on this one. Okay, okay. Um, next up is the Celebration Bowl. Um, this one is two teams that, honestly, I haven't watched a game of either of them this year. So this was kind of a random pick on this one. Um, it's Jackson State versus South Carolina State. I'm going to take Jackson State, um, but I'm putting this one at my 44th confidence because, quite honestly, I have no idea on this one. Um, the next one is Tony the Tiger Bowl played in El Paso, Texas. This one, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to be a homer on this one. I'm going to take my Miami Hurricanes. Um, I think them losing Garrett King this year really derailed their season, but they were able to put enough wins together to get into a bowl game. Granted, it's not a very big bowl game, but it's a bowl game. Um, there's rumors that Mario Cristobal from Oregon is going to be the next Miami Hurricanes head coach. Um, I don't know if that's true yet or not. As of now, it's rumors. There are some reports saying it's official, but I don't think it's official yet. So I don't believe he'll be coaching in that game. But I'm putting this one at my 39th confidence because I'm not overly confident in this game, but I am going to be a homer and take my Miami Hurricanes. <laughs> I mean, Miami's a good team, so I don't think it's a it's a it's never a bad pick to go with uh with Miami. Yeah. So um, yeah, they're not they're not bad. They just I really think that De'Aaron King injury really really derailed their season. They were I think they were really depending on him this year. You, you know, absolutely. You know, and and they were, and, and uh, that was definitely a, a big blow to them. Um, they would have at least probably finished a little bit stronger in their conference and probably been right. a little bit a little bit more a little stronger bowl game had they uh, had he played all season, but what you can't do anything about that. That's how the season goes. That's how it right. ends sometimes. Um, I'm actually going to be following you up on both those games. I'm also taking Jackson state or South Carolina state. Jackson state looks really good. And I think they're, uh, they're going to beat up on South Carolina state pretty well over there in the celebration bowl. And then in the Tony, the Tiger bowl, I'm also going to take the Miami hurricanes uh, this is actually a rematch of the 2015 Sun Bowl. It was the last time these two played, and they played against each other. Um, both teams are on a roll right now. Miami's won five of the last six, while Washington State has won six of the last eight. I think Miami uh, keeps that going here at the end of the season. They have a lot to play for with like kind of getting hope going into next season with the new coach and everything else. So I'm uh, I'm gonna put my uh, put my put my odds on Miami and I'm giving it a 26 overall on my board. And then finally, I'm going to move over to uh, the next one, which is the tax slayer bowl. This is a December 31st bowl game between wake forest and Texas A&M wake forest just came out of losing that um, ACC championship game finished rankings in number 17 and m barely slid back in by getting into the 25th spot. Right. But the big thing about AM, they have one of the very best defenses in the entire country. I think that defense is going to show up. 
and is probably going to beat up on Wake Forest a little bit. And as such, I am going AM and I'm going AM in my top 10 most confident of the entire year because I really think AM is just, once again, it's one of those like SEC versus ACC and in, especially in football, uh, the SEC usually gets the better hand of a lot of those games. Right, right. So in the in the Tax Slayer Bowl, I'm I'm actually going to go the other way than you went. I'm I'm going to take Wake Forest in this one. Um, I think Texas A&M coming from the SEC, it's going to be a really tough game. Um, but I'm going Wake Forest. They had two wide receivers that went over a thousand yards this year. At Perry had a one thousand one hundred and sixty six yards, and Jakari Robertson had one thousand seventy eight yards. And I I think that passing game is gonna is gonna take this game. Um, I'm not superly confident in it, though. I'm going with it at my 40th overall in confidence. So, eh, you know, it's yeah. a game that I'm kind of taking the, I guess, the quote-unquote underdog in. I'm going to take the Wake Forest team over Texas A&M. Well, we also know that you're a, you're an ACC homer. So, I am. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not overly shocked by the fact that you, uh, you put the ACC school over the SEC. I think you're going to be regretting that. But – Huge swing on that one. That's a 30-point swing difference between the two of us on whoever gets that game right. So Yeah, because you're you're very confident in this one. Yes. I'm not. (laughs) It goes back. It's the same as our uh, our Oregon State, Utah State earlier. It's uh, pretty much the exact reciprocals of each other on this one here. So we'll see see how those two games turn out because that could be a big-time swing on the whole overall scoreboard. But Absolutely. With that said, let's jump into the next set of games and – Next one up. This one is a personal favorite of mine just because I've been to the game before. It's down where I used to live once upon a time. And that is in Nashville. And it is the Music City Bowl where the University of Tennessee is going to be playing Purdue. Tennessee is going to get their third chance at winning a uh, Music City Bowl. And um, they it, it's kind of a homer game for them because they're from Tennessee. They're on the other side of Tennessee, right. but they're in Tennessee. But uh, Purdue this year, they played the fourth hardest strength of schedule in the entire country which is kind of surprising yeah. with their conference but that's just how it works sometimes and uh fun interesting tidbit on purdue is their last bowl game that they played in was actually the 2016 music city bowl in which they lost okay. i think the fortunes changed this year though they are going to knock off tennessee and uh send tennessee singing back to to knoxville with uh with a loss out of the music city bowl <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Maryland going up against Virginia Tech in the Pinstripe Bowl. This is actually going to be played at Yankee Stadium in New York, um, where the Pinstripe comes from. Uh, First time Maryland's played in a bowl game since 2016. And uh, this one's an interesting one because both these teams actually once were in the ACC and they played each other quite frequently. Their their total matchup is actually 16 to 15 Maryland's advantage. Um, I think Maryland is... Yeah, it's very close. I think Maryland is going to stretch that out one more game farther and they're going to take it and beat Virginia Tech. So mm-hmm. it'll now be 17 to 15 after this matchup. But um, yeah, this is the first time they've met since they've left the ACC. But uh, well, since Maryland left the ACC and went over to the Big Ten. But, right. Um, I think it's going to be a good game and we'll see who comes out on top of that one there. And final one for this set, uh, let's go to the Birmingham Bowl down in Alabama. You have pretty much a home team in Auburn, which is right up the road from there, going against the University of Houston. Now, this is an interesting matchup because a lot of the matchups are usually like they're relatively similar in like ranking or where they place. The University of Houston's 11 and 2 this year, uh, ranked number 21, which I felt was a little bit low ranking. I mean, their biggest loss was to, I mean, they lost to Cincinnati. So like, I mean, that says a lot about you. Um, and they gave Cincinnati right. a good run for the. Oh well, they really did. There was this pretty bad game, but uh, they tried. <laughs> they lasted about a quarter where they gave them a run for their money. Right. Um, but it's an Auburn team. That Auburn really, the literally the only thing they did all season was almost beat Alabama, but they still lost. Uh, yeah. They do have a five and one historical record against uh against Houston, but I uh, my thing is I'm big on this one because. Auburn is an SEC school with a lot of big players, a lot of players that are probably going to go to the NFL, no matter how bad they were this year. And I think a lot of those players could very likely opt out, which is going to be a common thread with some of these teams that are top tier teams 
that don't make it into like the playoff is a lot of them will let their guys opt out. And I think it's going to hurt them to the point that I think Houston knocks off Auburn, even though I don't know really if you can consider an upset being their 11 and two going against the six and six Auburn team, but right. uh, it is SEC against the world. And I think the world takes advantage of this one and pulls it off. Well, jumping back over to the music city bowl, I'm going to agree with you on this one. I, th- I think Purdue beats Tennessee. Um, Purdue, they had a really, they have a really solid passing game again. Um, wide receiver, he's a junior, David Bell, 93 receptions on the year, 1,286 yards, six touchdowns. Um, they have a senior quarterback, so he's experienced. Aiden O'Connell, 73.5 passer or uh, completion percentage. That's, that's pretty, pretty solid. Um, over 3,100 yards, 23 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Um, I'm not overly confident in this one. I'm putting it at 32nd, but I am taking Purdue in this game. Um, the pinstripe bowl. I just want to point out, I think it's really cool. It's being played at Yankee stadium. That's awesome. Um, Maryland's quarter in this one. I'm not confident at all in that pick though. I'm, I'm putting it 43rd. Um, I'm just, again, I think Virginia Tech is going to pull this out. I'm an ACC guy. I'm going to go with the Virginia Tech team over the Big Ten team. It's, it's, call me a homer. I'm going to do it. Homer. Um, <laughs> um, the, the Birmingham Bowl, I am taking Houston. I think Houston is a really good team. Um, they're not a power five team, but I think some of these power five teams are starting to show that they deserve to be looked at really no different. And Auburn, I just don't see where Auburn can, can compete with them this year. Um, I agree with you. Really. The only thing that Auburn did this year was take Alabama to three overtimes. And even as good as Alabama is, that Iron Bowl every year, it does not matter how good those teams are. That is always one of those games that you don't know who's going to win that game. And I just – I think that Auburn looked good in that game, but they didn't really look good at all any other point in the season. And so I'm, I'm going Houston in that one. Um, I'm putting that actually at my number three overall in confidence. I, I'm, I'm really confident Houston is going to pull that one out. Now, moving on to the guaranteed rate bowl. This one, I have Minnesota winning this, and I have it at my eighth overall confidence. Uh, I think Minnesota is a good team. They seem to be a good team every year anymore, and they're coming into the game with an 8-4 and four record. West Virginia is 6-6. Six and six. Um, I, think, I, I, th- I think Minnesota pulls this one out, but – I do want to point out that West Virginia had a pretty good running back this year. Um, He's a senior, Letty Brown. He had 223 carries, 1,065 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Um, Pretty solid year, but I just – I don't think they can keep up with Minnesota. Minnesota is pretty good every year. They they just seem to get a little better and better every season, and they're they're becoming a kind of a – I don't want to say a powerhouse program – but being in the Big Ten, they're, they're, they're keeping up with all those Big Ten teams. And they're putting players in the NFL. Like, I, I just I, – I, I think Minnesota's going to pull it out. And, and I'm confident, eighth overall. Um, next, jumping over to the Citrus Bowl. This one is between number 17, Iowa, and number 25, Kentucky. I think this is going to be a really good game. Um, Iowa – Iowa actually had a linebacker that really stood out to me this year. He had 126 total tackles, um, 53 solo, 73 assisted, um, defended five passes, two interceptions, um, only one sack, but he did have the two interceptions. Um, He scored two touchdowns. He returned an interception and he took a fumble back for for touchdowns. Um, Pretty good season. Jack Campbell, he's a junior linebacker. I think he's going to have a big game in this one. Um, I think Iowa's going to pull this one out, and I'm putting this one at my 13th overall because I'm, I'm pretty confident in Iowa. I think they have a pretty good team. They did lose some games this year that I thought they would win, but they, they had a pretty solid season, if you ask me. 
Um, the Big Ten is not an easy conference to play in, and they they seem to do well every year. So I I'm going with Iowa. All right, all right. Well, I honestly have no real disagreements with you on either one of those two games. I for the, both the guaranteed rate and the Citrus Bowl. Um, I also follow you up. I saying Minnesota over West Virginia, and then I'm saying Iowa over Kentucky. Only fun tidbit about Iowa is their head coach is um, oh sorry, Kentucky's head coach is Mark Stoops, and Mark Stoops actually played for Iowa back in the 1980s. So this will be hey. a return home to his uh, his alma mater type game. But uh, I don't think it's going to end well for him. I think Iowa will pull it off and beat them. Uh, they want to get some revenge on the SEC, too. They've lost four of their last five games against the SEC all in bowl games. So we'll see if they can <laughs> – we'll see how they do it. But I'm putting them all the way up in my number six overall because I feel pretty confident about uh, that Iowa team. They, they looked really good this year, and I think they're going to they're gonna play really well in that game. Okay, okay. And then uh, next up, uh, we go into the Sugar Bowl, one of our New Year's Six games. I think Baylor is going to come to town with some vengeance on their mind because they did not have a good uh, ending to their season, the regular season. They lost in that conference championship game. It cost them uh, – um, uh, well, sorry, they, they won their conference championship game, and they, I think that's gonna, they, the momentum there is going to keep them – Set that <laughs> mixing up my schools. All right, and then finally, uh, let's look. We're going to go into our New Year's six games, uh, the the big the big bowl games of the year. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about. Let's talk about uh, the Sugar Bowl. It's going to be Baylor versus Ole Miss. Baylor coming off that super awesome win over Oklahoma State. It knocked Oklahoma State out of any chance of getting in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. boosted, boosted them up to number seven in the rankings to give them a chance to really make a, a big bowl game splash. And they're going to be going up against an Ole Miss team, which also looked really good. Ole Miss actually got yep. the, the benefit of this one. So it's really interesting. The Chicken Bowl is always the – SEC champ versus the Big 12 champ. Well, the SEC champ is in the playoffs. The SEC runner-up is in the playoffs. So it goes down to number three in the SEC, which is Ole Miss, which had a great season as well. And um, they've been really – that program's turned around a lot uh, and I think could be a, a playoff contender in the coming years. Um, yeah. Giffen over there. And, um, but then you have Baylor who come in, beat Oklahoma State, uh, they actually lost in the Sugar Bowl to Georgia two years ago, but um, I think uh, I think this is going to be a really good game, and I ultimately think that Baylor is going to pull it out and knock off Ole Miss. I'm pretty confident about it too. I'm going to put that up at number 14 on my big board. Ooh, 14. That's that's going pretty high. Absolutely. Confident. I'm uh, I'm I'm not as confident in this one as you are. Um. I'm putting it 34th confidence, but I am going to agree with you with Baylor. Um, I, I think Baylor, you know, knocking off Oklahoma State in that Big 12 championship, I think that was huge. Um, like you said, it, it knocked Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State was looking like as long as they won that game, they were almost a no doubt to get into the, the playoff. And then they lost. And that kind of scrambled everything for a minute. Everyone was kind of, whoa, now who's going to get in? You, you know? Um, Baylor had their senior running back, Abram Smith, 232 carries, 1,429 yards and 12 touchdowns on the season. But the stat that really stuck out to me with him was 6.2 yards per carry. That's a lot. Absolutely. Um, they also have a really good, uh, senior receiver, Taekwon Thornton. He had 61 receptions, 946 yards and nine touchdowns. But again, the stat that stuck out to me. 15.5 yards per reception. That That's pretty crazy. That's a lot of yards. Um, kind of a, a big play happen could happen at any moment with this guy, you, you know. Absolutely. Um, Ole Miss, their quarterback is definitely uh, kind of, I would say, the star of their team, Matt Coral. Um, 68.4 passer or uh, uh, passing rate or, wow, passing completion percentage. <laughs> 
He had 3,339 yards on the season, which is 15th overall in the entire nation. Um, 20 touchdowns to only four interceptions. That's a pretty, pretty good ratio. Um, they also have uh, Dontario Drummond at receiver. He's a senior as well, so he'll be gone after this year. Um, 67 receptions, 924 yards, eight touchdowns. Um, I think it's a pretty evenly matched game, but I think Baylor is going to win it. But like I said, I am not overly confident in this one. I'm going 34 because I, I would not be surprised to see this game go either way, but I am going to stick with Baylor on that one. Now, the next big game, this is another New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, jumping into our next uh, New, Year's, New Year's Six game, this one is the Fiesta Bowl. It's played in Glendale, Arizona. This one is going to be between number five, Notre Dame, and number nine, Oklahoma State. Now, Notre Dame ended up being the first team left out of the playoff. Um, their only loss on the season was to Cincinnati, who ended up making the playoff as a non-Power 5 team. So it shows you that they're a pretty good team. Their only loss is to a top four team that's going on to play for a championship. Um, the Oklahoma state, again, like I said, they, they kind of looked like, uh, as long as they win their championship, they're getting in, they ended up losing to Baylor, which puts them back at number nine, but they did still get a bid to play in a new year's six game. Now this game, again, I'm not really confident in this one because I think both of these teams are really, really solid. Um, I think Notre Dame being the first team left out kind of is going to be the favorite in it, but I think it's very evenly matched, but I am going to go with Notre Dame. Um, I, I think Notre Dame, they have a really good uh, sophomore running back. He, uh, Kyron Williams, he 204 carries a thousand and two yards and 14 touchdowns, but this is two consecutive years going over a thousand yards for him. And he's a sophomore. Um, Oklahoma state, they lost the, the Big 12 championship, but they had a really, really good year. Um, their senior running back, Jalen Warren, he had two, 237 carries, 1,134 yards, 11 touchdowns. Um, they have a senior wide receiver, Tay Martin, hit 70 receptions, 942 yards, and seven touchdowns. But uh, their defense played really well this year. They have a senior linebacker named Malcolm Rodriguez, Um 118 total tackles, 68 solo, 50 assisted, three sacks, um, two passes deflected, four forced fumbles. That's a lot of forced fumbles in a college football season. Uh, two fumble recoveries, and he scored a touchdown. So their defense played really well all year, but I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards Notre Dame on this one. Yeah, man, I can't, uh, I can't actually argue with you too much. I also am going to take Notre Dame on this one here, but uh, I definitely have a much more higher confidence than them. I'm actually putting them number 11 on my board. Um, okay. I, I'm, I'm trusting myself with these big games. I think I can uh, pick them right, and that's why they're all following on, falling on the, on the big side of the board. Um, and really the only big thing I would say on top of that is just like I really think that uh, Notre Dame, although they lost their head coach with Brian Kelly leaving, uh, Marcus Freeman, like that team seems like they're inspired to play well for him. Um, yeah. He's going to be their long-term coach now. And uh, I think that is going to motivate them to come out and really show off what they got. Um, both teams have played in the Fiesta Bowl before. Notre Dame's won four all time while Oklahoma State's 2-0. and But I do think Notre Dame pulls it off. One thing that I found interesting about this one, though, is uh, the Fiesta Bowl is usually the game that every year always has, like, the 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 – the group of five team that's gets into that one, but right. because of the fact that Cincinnati was put in the championship is why, or the playoff is why they actually decided to go with another two power five schools. So that's yeah. an interesting, interesting little note. And then uh, I say we had one more to this first uh, video in this first week of the playoffs. And that is my personal favorite game of them all. We actually talked about this just last week because we <laughs> did our, um, best rivalries of all time. If people haven't seen it already, go check out that video of the top five rivalries in the history of football. But uh, going into it, it is the army Navy game. Um, one of the best games of the year, my personal 
one of my favorites of all the football games that are played every yeah. single year. So this is such a huge, epic battle. Um, Army has pretty much already clinched the uh, commander in chief trophy this year because, um, well, they're like eight and two. Navy is right. really bad. Uh, <laughs> and Army did beat Air Force earlier this year, unfortunately. Go Air Force. Just didn't happen that time. Um, and although I will be cheering for Navy every step of the way in this game, I do think Army does pull out the win. Even if I'm a, I am definitely going to be pulling for the Navy. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on this one. Th- this is also one of my favorite games every year. Um, just kind of the 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 pride behind it and the the American spirit of the game. It's just it, even when these teams aren't good, it's just a, a really awesome game to watch. Um, I'm going with Army. I think Army had a really good season, and Army's actually going to be talked about again in this series. Um, Army, to me, they uh, they had five players rush for over 300 yards. Now, 300 yards isn't like a standout stat, but to have five guys go over that is is kind of impressive. That means the ball was being handed over all over the place. You didn't really know who's going to get the carries in those games. Um, But on the Navy side, they had four players go for over 300 yards, which makes sense with the kind of offenses that these teams run. That triple option. Exactly, exactly. But it just shows you that you don't know who's going to get the ball on every play. When you have that many guys rushing for several hundred yards on the season – it kind of it, it just kind of shows you that anybody could get the ball and anyone could do anything with it. And uh, Army's uh, top leading rusher was their junior running back, Jacoby Buchanan. He had 111 carries on the year, 412 yards and 11 touchdowns. But like I said, they had five players over 300 yards. Now, Navy, theirs is a little heavier to one player but they did have four guys go over 300. Um, They have a senior. He actually plays fullback, which is kind of a forgotten art in football nowadays. Um, But he is listed as a fullback. Um, Isaac Ruos, he had 157 carries on the yard, six around the season, 608 yards and five touchdowns. So he was definitely their leading rusher. But uh, these two teams are just fun to watch. The, The triple option, you don't see it very often. It's not, it's not a, um, it, it's not a, a prominent offense anymore. It used to be way back in the day, but it is definitely not anymore. But these two teams have always stuck to it, and it's just really fun to watch. It's an exciting game, um, and like I said, just the kind of the brotherhood and the and the American feeling and the and you, you know this game is just it, it's something else to watch. It's really great. Um, Every year, it's one of the games I look forward to seeing. So I'm going with Army in that one. I agree with you. Absolutely. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of this part of our series. I hope everyone enjoyed. I would love to hear what everyone else's thoughts are. Do you agree with us? Disagree with us? Would you put as much confidence in your picks? Uh, (laughs) As you can see, uh, Zach is much more confident in the games that have teams that are not as highly known and ranked and uh is a little bit less confident on the big games i put all my confidence in the big games i trust (laughs) in the big ones um go big or go home but uh well we'll see how it all goes but uh uh hope everyone joins us back for part two in just another couple days